and welcome back to another edition of Fight Tricks Live, or in this case, recorded on Thursday, and I'll answer your questions live as soon as this bit is finished. I'm super excited about this topic today. Uh, it's one that we get a lot of questions about, and I have a special guest with me. So today, we're going to be talking about all things breaks. So just stop right there. And let me introduce my special guest, DJ. Come on in. Hello, everyone. So you've met DJ before if you've been watching these videos, but if this is your first one, just in case, welcome. DJ, can you tell me a little about yourself? Yeah, I'm, I'm the software manager over here and working for the, with the bike tech since like two, more than two and a half years. Excellent. DJ builds great bikes. Um, all right, DJ, I want to talk to you about brakes, different sizes of brakes, different parts of brakes, how we take care of our brakes. So to start with, the majority of our bikes come with a... Dual piston, dual piston hydraulic, hydraulic disc brakes. brake. Yeah. Uh, and on a lot of our competitors, you may see some of that. Some of that might be an upgrade. Upgrade to like quad piston. Yeah. Um, or you might even just see a mechanical disc brake. So, but today we're going to be focusing specifically on hydraulic, quad, and dual piston disc brakes that you can get on your bikes here at Bike Tricks. So, let's just show off some bits and pieces. All right, so the stock brakes you're going to find on the majority of our bikes are the dual piston hydraulic brakes. This is what one looks like off the bike. You've got your lever, a reservoir, uh, brand name may vary. Sometimes we use OEMs. Um, and then you've got your caliper down here with some brake pads and your piston. So we'll dig into what all of that means in just a second. And then you have a couple of different options for quad piston. So one DJ has in his hand here, I'll trade you. So again, we've got some Tektro Dorado brakes here. They've got you know, your lever, mineral oil reservoir, your brake pads. You can see they're a little different shaped in this caliper here and dual piston. And then you've got like what I have on my bike, the Magura MT5E quad piston brakes so you've got big fancy cal like levers up in here uh, reservoirs um, and then you've got your calipers down here and i don't know if you can see alex because it's in there but the quad pistons up in there and then these also have a nice big rotor and we'll talk like about rotors one here. two three four quad pistons quad pistons beauty Right up in here. Excellent. All right. Now, that's just your levers and your calipers. There's a whole other component to your brakes, and that's these babies. These aren't Frisbees. Wouldn't suggest using them as Frisbees, although they'd probably be kind of fun. It's your rotor. So they do come in a variety of sizes, and different bikes will take a different size. I do have two of them these ones all right so one of the most common sizes you'll see is the 160 followed by the 180 followed by a 203 Three. all right you can see different sizes there 160 180 203 so DJ what's the advantage of having different sized pistons different size rotors what does it all mean so with the bigger rotor you'll have bigger area to hold on so it will have more braking power so then the bigger rotor paired with the bigger caliper the more yes. pistons that's just more braking power with more rotor for those brakes to grab onto yes who would want like what kind of rider would want uh, that kind of setup we recommend like magura or quad piston brakes on especially after trail riding for sure, if for you are sure. go, if you are more tra uh, tra more of a trail rider, then you have to go for a better braking power. Yeah, it's just that great extra level of security, stopping power, safety. So maybe even if you're in a really hilly area, like yep. maybe you live in San Francisco and you commute, you might want commute big brakes. and if you want to ride really fast. Yeah, if you want to get need better braking power. Yeah, if you want to get real zippy about it. Yeah. Awesome, but I have found for. A good portion of our riders, I would say probably at least 90%, those stock brakes are more uh, than sufficient. More efficient, I would yeah, say. They're yeah, they're really good. And that brings us to maintenance because 
Okay, so I chose one type of brake for my bike, but like any other part on a bike, there is things that come up, things you need to maintain, uh, things you need to watch out for. Are any of those harder or easier to maintain than the other, the dual piston or the quad piston? To maintain, both are the same. Both are the same. But, but yes, if you wanna, if you wanna bleed them, then quad pistons are a little bit trickier than the dual pistons. Gotcha, and what's bleeding a bike? It's a like brake. taking the air out of the whole like hydraulic hose. So out of taking the air out of the like whole, the whole braking whole system. Yeah. Because this is full of oil and that's what makes yeah. it hydraulic. Cool. You'll see so one bleeding pot is here. And another one is right here. So these are the bleeding parts. Sweet. Now is that something I could do myself or should I maybe take it to a bike shop? Yes. Uh, I would recommend to go to a local bike shop. Okay, because it can get kind of messy and because, And tricky. you need special tools as well. Got it. And most of the customers won't have those tools. I see. For sure. Excellent. So if you need to bleach your brakes, take them <laughs> to a bike shop. Those are the different types of brakes that we carry. Who might want them? Um, when I first get a bike or anybody first gets their bike out of the box, all assembled, ready to rock and roll. Is there anything I need to do? Yeah, first thing uh, you should do is bedding the brakes. Bedding in the brakes. So I go get a pillow and I go get a blanket and I just tuck them in and say, <laughs> good night, little brakes. I'll see you in the morning. No, I don't think that's it. <laughs> no. How do I bed in brakes, DJ? It's normally like grab the brake, like, like partially hold the brake and go back and forth a couple, like few times. That will like hold the rotor onto the pads entirely and it will like kind of uh, polish the rotor and the brake pads as well. Excellent. And so I've also seen where after you've done that, you find a straightaway or maybe a parking lot and then you yeah. speed up, slam on your brakes. Yeah. Speed up, Turn slam on brakes. your brakes. And you just do that repetitively. What happens if I don't? Uh, you'll end up having squeaky brakes for squeaky sure brakes. in like a couple of rides. Okay. And is there anything to be concerned about with squeaky brakes other than the sound? Is they got a reduction in stopping power? Yes, you will lose problems? braking power lose after braking. a few rides. Got it. So you can get squealy brakes and that's going to reduce stopping power. So, um, DJ, my back brake actually is kind of squeaky. So can we maybe take a look at that? Yeah, sure. And we not? can go through just checking out what might be the cause of it. It's an entirely possible. I didn't break them in properly. Yeah. Um, and I just don't want to have a reduction in braking power, particularly because I do use my bike so often as a commuter and getting to and from work as well as for fun on trails on the weekends. So yeah, sure. we let's look, have a look. look. Yeah. All right, DJ, we got these cool black gloves that pretty much I've only seen my tattoo artists wear. Why are we putting <laughs> on gloves? Because I'm going to work on the, your like rear brake. Perfect. Is it because it's messy or is it because there's something I shouldn't touch with it, my bare hands? It will be messy. It will be messier as well. And plus there is like a lot of dirt, mud. So you sure. don't want to get your hands dirty. What about my brake rotor? I probably don't want to get no, my No, you don't want to cut yourself as well. All right. So yeah. for safety and cleanliness, we got cool black gloves. Okay. So if you see over here, your first, your rotor is, looks dirty. So right. does the rest of my bike, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll now we'll check the brake pads. I don't know if that showed up on camera, but when he loosened that, there's a whole little puff of just like Dust. grime that came out. I should probably wash my bike more. So there's the caliper off. And you can see a lot of dust. The grime. Plus on the pads as well. I'll take the pads out too. They are just magnetic pads, so you don't need any special tools. If you see, your brake pads are like 50% worn out. Hmm. Oh yeah, I can see. You can see the. There's like a ridge here. All right, so now what do we do? We've got it up so this apart. We'll clean them with sandpaper and we'll clean the rotor as well with some isopropyl alcohol. Okay, well let me get this part set up while you take that rotor off. 
We can do the rotor on the bike. Oh, okay, great. We don't let's need to take it off. let's go clean these with sandpaper. Yeah. Normally, like, the grade would be around 250, 300. So. Just, there you go. You can see the dust. Clean versus not clean or cleaner versus not. There. Now you can see it is flat. This one's not. And this would be the same process with any brakes. With any brakes, yes. So whenever you feel your brakes is brakes are squeaking, sand the brake pads and it will be done. Sandpaper on a flat surface, right? Yeah. That's generally helpful. Yes, I would. And I think with a solid surface, and you rub it on the table, it's probably more efficient than if you're like rubbing it like that. Hey, right? No, don't that do is that. not <laughs> do recommended. <this. laughs> Be more even. That way. So these are these are more cleaner brick beds. Beauty. Next is your rotor. Normally, we, I use isopropyl alcohol to clean the rotor. Which so, is just a rubbing yeah. alcohol. Oil. Don't, never use oil. <laughs> no. That's, in fact, what we're trying to remove. And be very careful, otherwise you might cut yourself here. So they can be sharp, and you also want to make sure you're not pulling because you don't want to accidentally bend your rotor either. I mean, I think it'd be a little harder, but just be gentle with yourself and your rotor. Can see the dust. Now we can put the brake pads back. There. So it will just snap on. Just click into place yeah. with the magnetic maguras. With the other ones, you'll have to use your Allen wrench. Yeah the tech jobs and the OEMs. Now we'll adjust the brakes so that there is no rubbing. All right, because I've heard this from customers too, where yeah, you can hear an intermittent like kind of so sound. That might, if it's intermittent, then that might be a bent rotor. Could be a bent rotor. And if it's continuous, then it's just it out needs of alignment. the caliper's alignment. All right, so let's give this a spin and see if it makes any it's noise. It's loose right now. I'll adjust okay. it first. All right, so from where I'm standing, I can see how it adjusts kind of side to side here. Let's see if Alex can get a shot of that down. Mm. Oh, that sound means something's not quite aligned. So if you hear 
like it means the rotor is bent at a spot we need to find a spot and bend the rotor a little bit all right so dj is using a rotor tool here just to adjust the a little bit of a bend my rotor has in it again dj is this something probably a bike shop should do right yes we shouldn't do it. customers sh i would recommend customers shouldn't do it because they won't have this tool yeah plus bending the rotor is like a precise job yes you want to be very careful with yeah. it because it's too easy to overshoot and not quite make it better All you have to do is like find the sweet spot where the rotor is right in the middle of both brake pads. Perfect. There. Yeah. All right. So sounds much quieter. Looks a lot more aligned. DJ got it bent back because I had bent my rotor a little bit uh, and realigned it after taking it apart to give it a clean and she sounds nice awesome and so that process is going to work on pretty much any hydraulic brake yes any hydraulic brakes love that all right so just the difference is going to be how you get those um, brake pads in and out uh, so on Magura's they're magnetic on your Tektros you're going to need an Allen key to unloose unloosen them that would be to tighten to loosen them and get them out and then to tighten them back in let's have a look so these ones have a pin do you pull the pin dj yeah you can just bend the pin down here this part you can bend it down and pull it out that's Excellent. it nice. and with this one you'll need a three mil to allen key and you can like easily unscrew it and take the pads out. Beautiful. All right, and I have a couple other pads. These are from Tektros. Dual piston. Dual piston. So you can see how they're a little bit different shape than mine were. And these are two from two different sets. So normally they would come in a pair, one on each side of the, the rotor. And these ones are, these ones are brand new. Sometimes you get your bike and it's brand new, or maybe you've been had it for a while and all of a sudden your brake levers are it's just soft. a little soft or yeah. squishy, they feel like. What would be causing that? Uh, some air in, in the reservoir part of the brake, that would cause that for sure. Awesome, okay, so let's have a look at that. So we have another Ultra Duo here. This would be the Ultra Duo 3 Step Over with your um, stock bike tricks dual piston, dual brake. piston brake and we're going to burp them they're just a little bit soft so we're just going to show you how to burp those brakes sure so first thing is to like keep this lever horizontal completely and we'll use a two mil allen key so carefully taking this screw out, I mean plug, and it has this o-ring as well. So be very careful, you don't lose it because they are very difficult to find. All right, I'll hold on to those while you work. And we have this little pot <laughs> and this has like plastic threads on it. So you can screw it in, but be a little careful Otherwise, they'll easily strip. And I can find these kind of setups like on Amazon or at a local bike shop. Yes. Yeah. Sometimes called a bleed kit. 
expert kit. Tectros bleed kits are very common and bike tricks for the bike tricks brakes you can get Shimano bleed kits as well. They are Sweet. compatible. Nice. All right, so now we've got some red juice. And this is regular mineral oil. Mineral oil, not Kool-Aid. Okay. So if you see closely, you can see the air yeah, you can coming see some out. Yeah, bubbles in there. There. And that's it. Oh, you literally just squeeze it until the bubbles stop. Yeah. Nice. And so I guess then as the air comes out, the mineral oil goes in, replaces those gaps in the air, and your brake salt firm yeah. up. You can check the, you, you, it feels better. Oh, yeah. Right? Yeah, and I don't see any more bubbles coming up. Bubbles out. coming up. Nice. Next to, let's suck the oil back. Yeah, I guess if you just took that off, it's going to be... A little messy. Yeah. <laughs> and then we put a band-aid on. No. You're just holding it like <laughs> when I got a needle, a little band-aid. Yeah. I use the napkin so it stays clean. Not forgetting the O-ring. That's it. And it's done. Break burped. Yeah. And it didn't even say excuse me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And should we do this side as well? Make sure they're even. What do you think? Yeah, they're even they feel now. pretty good. Awesome. Yeah. All right. And so that's how you burp your brakes. Now, is that something folks can do at home or should we do a bike? Uh, this can be done at home. But if you have a soft Tektro brakes, those tools are not common. And you or do you mean Maguras? And Maguras. With Maguras, you cannot do it. Maguras you got, you got to bleed shop. them. Okay. And for that, you got to go to a local bike shop. Got it. And for Tectros, if you have a bleed kit already, then you can do it. Otherwise, local bike, bike shop. shop. Awesome. Now, when we were looking at things before we started shooting, we've got these two little jars. This is the same oil that you just used here. Yeah, mineral oil. What's this one? This is Magura Royal Blood. That's what they call <laughs> But it is basically a kind of mineral oil. A kind of mineral. Could I put this one in my gurus? No. Could I put this one in here? No. All right. So if you have Maguras, make sure you're using the compatible parts. And that's part of taking it to the bike shop to make yeah. sure they're using the, the right stuff. Um, they're amazing brakes, but they do have just a few of their own little quirks when it comes yes. to maintenance. So we've burped brakes. We've bled brakes. We've bedded brakes. We've selected brakes. Any other common issues we see with brakes or anything you would recommend uh, maintaining? A lot of questions. We, we face a lot of questions upgrading the rotors. Right? Upgrading the rotors, Especially yes. the CX people have like a lot of questions regarding rotor upgrades. Okay. So when you upgrade from like, for an example, 160 to 180. Mm -hmm. So all you have to need, find is a correct mount. Okay. So if it's a post mount like this one, this is called a post mount where the caliper goes directly on the post. Got this it. is called post mount. And we have another IS mount where the, cal the caliper will go on the side. Okay. That's, that's, that would go on, come on like our classic bikes, Got regular it. classic bikes. So that's something you would need to consider if consider you were upgrading you're your brakes bra after you've purchased it. If yes. you don't purchase your brake upgrades at the time of when you order your bike so if you order your brake upgrade at the same time you order your brake dj and his squad's going to do that work for you and put those upgraded brakes you won't have to worry about putting fresh mounts or sourcing different yep. things if you're somebody who ordered stock and maybe a couple of years down the line or something decide you know what, i do want some beefier upgrade. brakes and i would like to upgrade, upgrade them the there's a few more pieces there just to consider and of course if you need a hand with that reach Again. out we'll help you out yep. let you know what parts you need for that 
Fantastic. I think we're ready to roll, aren't we? Yeah. All right, so that's it for breaks today. Again, if you have any questions, comments, pop them down in the chat. I will be live in just a moment to answer <laughs> those for you. Uh, and if you have any questions beyond that, feel free to reach out. We do have a lot of support materials on brakes, aligning your rotors and different things like that on our resource center, on our help desk there. Um, but again, any questions, we're here to help. Thanks for joining me again today. See you in a second future, Shannon, for those questions. Have a great day. Bye. Thanks, yesterday, Amy. Welcome to the live portion of the live where we're going to answer some of your questions, address some of the comments that have come up in the chat, and a couple of questions I actually got on the post in Facebook saying, hey, we're going to do this live. So let's dive right in. Um, first, just as the live started, RV Sunday, but not today, asked us to make sure we explain how you are supposed to use both brakes together. As for the longest time, his wife only used one brake and had a hard time of getting her out of that. Uh, yes, you are correct. You should always use both brakes together. Uh, uh, several reasons for this. One, if you're going fairly quick and you grab just your first brake. If you grab just your front brake, you might tip over or like slide. You might like have, it's you may great. fall as well. Right? Yeah. And we don't want you to get hurt. Yeah. Same with the back, you Same might get with the a little back. Squirrely. You might slide over as well if the road is wet or slippery. Exactly. Yeah. So for best control and safety, both. It also helps your brakes wear even yeah. as well, so you're not having to replace one. You might end up getting yeah. one brake one brake pad like we are out early, sooner yeah. early. This one will keep everything so. a little more even. Awesome. So yes, absolutely, both brakes at once for best braking power and braking experience. Um, earlier, uh, Sarah had left a comment on Facebook saying, uh, my brake squeak tried cleaner and it helped for a day or so and then it started again. So I did some digging for you, Sarah. Yes, there's a few reasons why this could be true. It might not, the squeak might not have been caused by dirty brakes. There's yes. other things that other could cause that. Other reasons like glazed brake pads or glazed rotor. And so a glazed brake pad or a glazed rotor is something that possibly your brakes weren't broken in or bedded in like bedded we talked about um, in the video earlier and so they've gotten kind of smooth and cleaning is not going to fix that. Not going to fix that. But what you can do is go through with just some sandpaper, some, uh, John told me 150 grit but even like 200 to 20 grit like we were using on the brake pads fits. there and just scuff them up, get them roughed up go over that um, brake pads and the rotor and then go back to your bedding in process, that could help. And, and so if you've done that, it's still not helping. If that doesn't do, then replace the rotor and brake pads both. Both, because you never know if one's contaminated and not the other. You place the non-contaminated thing. Yeah, it might, if you don't change the brake pads, it might contaminate the rotor. Exactly. And if you don't change the rotor, it might contaminate the brake pads. And then you're no further ahead. Yeah. Awesome. All right. So there's just a few things there that uh, you can do. So do those in pairs if you are getting squeaky brakes. All right. So as always, go ahead and pop some questions if you have any questions about brakes, brake maintenance um, in the chat. I do have it open here to answer your questions. Um, DJ, you when we came upstairs to sit down to watch the video and get in on this live, you said there's a couple things maybe we missed yesterday. Let's address those right now. Yeah, we missed to mention like types of brake pads, like material yesterday. Yeah, so let's dig um, into that. For an example, with the brake pads, there are like metallic brake pads. Metallic ones, organic yeah. Organic brake pads. Organic. And hybrid, like mixture of both. I also have on my list um, Kevlar and ceramic. Ah, uh, those are like very high-end brake pads and very expensive. Okay. So that's the like more, not most of the customers would like prefer that but if they can buy then they are the Go best for it. um when what i want say a ceramic brake pad sorry a ceramic brake pad like you said that's on one of the higher ends when would that maybe be a good idea or something i would want to consider uh if you are if you're if you need like superior brake power like for off-roading and trail riding sure then sure why not cool yeah, just for that extra grabbing power. Now, would any of these wear out faster than another? Organic, organic brake pads would wear out faster, but they are they won't squeak at all. 
not squeak. So they're quieter, but they will. And wear. on the other hand, metallic brake pads have superior braking power, and they won't wear out super fast, but they, tend they to will be loud. squeak. They will tend to be loud, and that's just a normal function of them. Yeah. Um, scuffing them up, bedding them in, cleaning them is not going to change that squeak. Yeah. Okay. It's Absolutely. their nature. It's so. just it's in their nature. All right. Um, so that covers our brake pad situation. Anything else you want to go over? Hmm. I do have a few up here. So we did cover the hydraulic bits on our brakes specifically. DJ, what's this for? That's brake sensor. Why so that's brake sensor? Uh, that's uh, safety for the motor. So when you use your brakes, it's gonna cut off the motor. Otherwise, you're gonna have two opposing forces, and, and um, it's gonna overheat the motor or burn the motor as well. Yeah, and so I, a common issue we um, get asked in CX is, oh, it's not engaging. And one of the first things we always ask people to check is their brakes, because if your brake is even a little bit engaged, then this is gonna tell your motor, don't go. The brakes are on because you don't want your motor going into a braked bike. It's just not good for your brakes or your motor. Um, so always check your connections just to make sure your brakes aren't engaged, that your lever isn't, you know, slightly compressed or stuck or something, um, and that these are connected correctly. Usually there's an icon that would come up on the display if your brakes are engaged. On a lot of them, it's like a little exclamation mark. But check your manual. We do have those on our resource page to know exactly uh, what your brake sensor um, icon on your display will look like. Because uh, sometimes it's just as simple as readjusting Unplug it, it, unplugging it, fixing your um, caliper here, your lever. Now, anything, is there any adjustments to the levers that can be made? Uh, or that we should be aware of? For the brake sensors? The levers. Oh, for levers. Oh, there is a little screw over here. Okay. So it's gonna stiffen up the lever. But gotcha. that can be done up to a certain point. So it's not if something you, you want to tinker with regularly. Yes. So if you like take the screw out completely, then mm -hmm. it's very difficult to put it back. Gotcha. So, and it's so tiny. Yeah. It's just a wee little one. You can't even see it. It's right in here. It's just a teensy little nugget. Um, so yeah, that's there in case that's an adjustment that needs to be made. But it's not something you'll commonly need to tinker with. All right, so anything else you wanted to go over, DJ? I think we have covered a lot. I think we've covered a lot of ground for sure. And as always, if you do have any other questions, um, feel free to pop them in the comments on this video. We do answer comments even after the video is completed. Send us a note to their support desk. We're happy to help. And we do have those resources for you on our webpage. Well, thank you so much for joining me for this one, DJ. Always a pleasure. It's always <laughs> awesome to have you here. Such a great resource and wealth of knowledge. Thank you to all of you who have joined us today for our live and our videos. And I will see you again next week. Bye. See ya.